everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I am working on a day job, one day bathroom transformation. It's real simple, it's real inexpensive, and I can tell you it takes very little tools. You can do this with hand tools and nails, you can do it with a power um, brad nailer or pin nailer, some people call them uh, finish nailers, lots of different varieties. So you want to pick up some of this I think it's one and a quarter inch by a quarter inch uh, uh, lattice and you can use different pieces this is perfectly flat with no rounded edges so what we're gonna do is take these original bathroom cabinets and give them an updated look that way you don't have to do an entire tear out we replaced the countertop a few years ago and it just wasn't in the budget to do the vanity it's a well-built um, with thick plywood vanity where a lot of the new stuff is composite and I just couldn't stomach spending that money. The rest of the bathroom has been complete. The cabinet up behind me was added a couple of years ago and it's a little more modern with fixture and it's real handy to have because we have a full mirror that I'd like to frame out and make look a little bit better. That might be part two of this project. So what you start with is your lattice and what you do is you measure the length of your door or your drawer panel that you want to box in and basically what you're making is a framework just like this is up here just the square around the edges you don't have to do any angles with this method we're just butting the edges up against each other craftsman style if you want to get detailed and do mitered corners um, the drawback that I find to that is accurate measurement, which numbers I always have a hard time with. And secondly, it tends to look like a picture frame. Um, a lot of uh, stick built kitchen cabinets or builder grade kitchen cabinets, they don't get into a lot of fancy trim work. So you could go wider pieces, you could go strips, you could add a section in the middle to make it look like a window. I have some real tall ones behind me that I may add some extra sections there to divide up the length of the cabinet. But, brad nailer, I think I picked this up at Menards many years ago for roughly $20 to $30. Wood glue and the length of brad nails that you require for this quarter inch plus your plywood or your cabinet that you already have. So I'm using three quarter inch brad nails and even this slatted or vented panel from under the original sink is going to get covered. Now a trick to that is you could put in one um, piece of wood and they have uh, small sections that are real thin like this in the craft section of a lot of stores. I actually found oak was cheaper than poplar and for about seven dollars you could have a um, small piece pinned on the front to cover this up or you could go a little more decorative and add strips here to make a smaller square instead of going all the way to the outer edge so I'm still considering what to do about that um, in the past I had a replacement whole panel uh, switched out and just modified my drawers to match a little bit however a new drawer front is roughly $30 and it's a lot cheaper just to put a new face on it um, cabinet refacing was real popular years ago where a company would come in and put um, melamine banded edging around your cabinet that you already had which was perfect for like a whole cabinet facelift. You can add a beadboard to it and then add the trimming and get an entirely new look. We're just going to go for a quick update uh, look. Like I said, an afternoon, lunches, breaks measurements in and out of the house. We're cutting outside. Uh, I have my air compressor set up for this. You can just use finish nails and tack them in, countersink them, mud them, sand them, paint it. And you can do that with um, just a small hand saw. Uh, we're using a miter saw out in the garage. So I've already got these cut to length. Let me show you how we're gonna tack them up. So the first thing I do is Put a strip of glue on the back side of it and that's going to help it bond and you can do this before or after you paint your cabinets whichever you prefer don't use too much glue it's going to squeeze out the edges 
And you can use a square or another piece of wood that you're gonna be putting along the top edge. I find this works really good for me to just use as a straight edge. And I'm just meeting up with the slightly curved edge of the cabinet to make sure that it is going to be level, plumb, square, without actually getting Now I want that to reveal a little bit on the edge. And I want it to match on this side. So we're doing them both at the same time. And doing the same thing on the bottom, making sure that I don't have any gaps here, that it's straight. And I can put another tack here. And the glue starts holding it in place, as well as trying to have that bond to your cabinet front. And I just wipe off any excess glue. Now I did this years ago on a 1950s kitchen and sold that house for a great profit without doing an entire kitchen renovation. It was fantastic. So I'm not going to tack this one in place just yet. Now you can, in this case, my two cabinet doors meet. And they're a little old and sticky. So, if you want to leave out this centerpiece, you can. I find it looks more finished having it in it. And since this is basically the first thing that people see when they walk into the bathroom, I want this one finished and complete. The one behind me, I may not, just because this is $1.14 a foot if it is unprimed. And if it's primed, you're actually getting a lower grade um, piece that may have been filled with wood filler but they've primed it for you and it's like 84 cents. So it helps speed up the process um, of getting this done. So with that in place, I'm just going to take a measurement from here to here. And you wanna make sure that it's same on top and bottom and from cabinet to cabinet because when I did the kitchen, they were not all cut square. So if I go eight inches, I will fill in that gap and that will be just fine. And just roughing it here. It looks like eight inches is gonna be good, but I'm gonna to want to tack this one up and get that measurement as well. In this case, sometimes it's easier to start in the center because you can easily move the outer edge to where you want it. Now for me, I knew that my holes are going to have to get moved and I'm probably going to put them up a little bit higher. So I went ahead and pre-filled my old holes so that it is easier finish work for me in the end because it's going to be very close to the edge of my wood strip when I get it mounted right here. And you can use whatever wood filler you like. I picked up DAP wood filler, and I'll show that to you in just a second. But uh, Elmer's makes a really nice one. I like this DAP because it's white, and it's not gonna take three coats of paint to cover. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. Just one tack. can make it square or straight here on the edge once I get that one on. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. I'm going to adjust you a little bit so you can see. Sorry about that. And make sure that it butts up against to the edge really nicely. I have to use my left hand 
out a mess. Okay. This one's all glued. So now I can look at this sure that it's budding up nicely and we get it nice and straight before I start tacking anything there. And I always put a staple there in the middle matching up the bottom edge. And now we'll just do the same thing for the other side. So this is a miter saw. If you don't own one, you can use a handsaw. They have a miter box. Stanley has one that's readily available online. I will link it down in the description below. And then here is just all of my stock. Save these small pieces because these help you with your drawers. These are all cutoffs from doing the doors horizontal or vertical. And then my cutoff pieces end up getting used as my horizontal strips going this way. So I'm out here to cut two more strips for my horizontal on the next cabinet. So I just measure out what I need cut it on the saw and take it back in.
Okay, so now that all of the nail filler, wood filler has dried, I'm just gonna bring all of it with a light sanding and blend it in real nice so that it just kind of disappears. You don't want any globbed up. You can see here I haven't finished sanding there. You can actually see it bubbled over. Once you paint that, it emphasizes it so much. So take your time in sanding. We're gonna go over all of this. You notice that there's um, some primed, some unprimed. I used up all my old stock. I had leftovers from my kitchen project that was already painted. So I can skip the primer on that. Probably two coats of paint overall and we'll be complete. Second coat of paint, getting a good layer on. I decided to give it overnight. It was getting late, give it a good time to dry. And this white needs a good second coat a lot of times. It is the bare paint with primer mixed in, but especially going over any areas that had bare wood, it really needs that second, second layer. Nice long, get rid of those brush strokes, just like that. I have to go through my original holes when somebody redid the hardware, they're off. And like on this one, it looked real crooked when it was on. So we'll fine tune our hardware. It's a good opportunity. If you haven't changed your hardware out in a long time, go ahead and do that. Um, knobs and poles are very, very ornate. These days, you can get some real nice ones at Hobby Lobby that you can't get at other places. Um, and Amazon has some fantastic prices. I actually know some resellers that get their supply uh, for their shops through Amazon. So my project is all done. I had decided, like I said, to wait a second day to do another coat because I had to drill new holes for my mounting hardware. Deciding where to put the hardware can be one of the tricks because if you put your mounting hardware, like I have in the past, right in your additional new wood strip, then you have to go buy quarter inch longer screws for all your hardware to make them fit. So in this case, I decided to just put it in the same location, moved over another inch. And if you notice that, I've got the old closing hardware. I need to adjust that a little bit. This one is pushed forward, so it's not letting that one shut all the way. Minor details, but all in all, we'll tell you that this can be done like on a Saturday afternoon, Sunday morning, while you have a day off. You don't need to take a vacation week or a week of personal days to do a quick little renovation like this. It really adds a quick facelift to an old bathroom. When we got this house, it had a pink linoleum, plywood covered countertop and matching floor. <clears throat> it was truly hideous. And it took a long time to finally pull that out because it was more to it than just a quick one day renovation. But it got done and the whole room looks so much better. So again, mounting hardware, I'll work on that. In the meantime, click that playlist, watch the home renovations, and you can see how to do this in your own home. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.